Welcome to week seven of the This Week in Film podcast, the show where we discuss what movies we saw this week. I'm your host, Nick Panotto, joined by my co-host, Tony LeBoy and Charlie Chester. What's up, dogs? What's going on, guys? Uh, Charlie, let's get right into it. All right. What'd you see this week? Uh, I saw uh, a little movie called The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. God. <laughs> Starring Andrew Dice Clay. It was uh, uh, a, his star vehicle. Uh, it was all, it was it's pretty much Andrew Dice Clay only star playing vehicle. Andrew Dice Clay in the character of a rock and roll private investigator. Oh, my God. Meaning that he only investigates uh, deaths and robberies or whatever of the uh, rock and roll elite of Los Angeles. What year is this? Ninety one, probably. It's be like ninety one to somewhere between ninety one and ninety four. It has that cheap lethal weapon look to it. Oh yeah, yeah, and where every where you can tell they just hose down the streets like oh my god, like like a like a neo noir yeah like all but it's all in daylight very little nighttime. Uh, the budget is surprisingly large for this movie. Really, someone, some producer is like, you know what, Andrew Dice Clay is going to be. The next huge thing. Let's. Well, he was the huge thing at make, the time, right? Uh, until until the adventures of Ford Fairlane. How many out. times do you think in the video edition of this I'm gonna cut to somebody going, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> um. So, comedy wise, was it funny? Um. As soon as like they get their stride, Andrew Dice Clay essentially talks to the camera like a noir, and says a terrible joke. Like just one that's like just, a filthy joke, or like... it was just really bad. Like, well, like one uh, joke that uh, would just essentially just take you out of the moment completely. Like that, it, no non sequitur, just awful. Like just to remind you, it's his movie. <laughs> it's not for you. It's for him. Uh, and uh, the one thing of note about it is that at one point uh, he gets paid. Not by cash. People, like, give him things. That's, like, the running shtick of it. And someone paid him with a koala bear. Like, a rare, extinct koala bear. What? Who becomes a character in the movie. And you would think that, you know, okay, they just have a little koala bear in a cage. No, it's it's a Muppet. <laughs> it's, it's a straight Muppet. <laughs> and it becomes a character up until the point, spoiler alert, uh, the bad guys in the movie that he's been chasing the whole time come after him, uh, and he comes into <laughs> he comes into his apartment, and the koala bear is hanging from a ceiling fa- ceiling fan, spinning around slowly. They hung it. They killed the koala bear. They, no, I'm sorry. They killed the muppet. Because they almost acknowledge that the thing is a Muppet, that it's not even real. It's just so ridiculous. Oh my! <laughs> I watched what this was it movie. Called? The Adventures, the Adventures of... of Ford Fairlane. And his drink of choice, because they have to do like the James Bond thing because he's the cool guy, right. uh, is uh, they all know what he drinks at the bars he goes to. It's a uh, Sambuca, Zambuca milkshake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds disgusting. Just, uh, I, I saw this movie probably when I was 12, and then again when I was 25. And. 25 year old me hated this movie. Yeah. It's everything about it is so dated. It's every every joke is so old. Every joke every joke feels so focus group. Every joke oh, in the movie right, feels right, right. like okay. pre focus group but where uh, but but instead of like asking regular people, it was just like a group of producers who were like, you know what's funny? A koala. <laughs> Who expects a koala? Put the koala in the movie. And Dice Clay is is either he's completely on board or he's just happy to get the paycheck. Or, or like or... he literally just walks on set and then when he's done, cameras off, he just walks off. Yeah. I, I imagine it's it's that. I mean it's, he doesn't even act in the movie. Well, I mean he just does his Dice Man character for an hour. Yeah, essentially. And every woman wants him. Well, of course. Every woman. This movie sucked. <laughs> <laughs> they even throw in like that heartfelt where like a uh, moment where like there's a kid who tries to hire him to find his dad who you assume left him 
you know, as a child, like, yeah. uh, like orphaned him because he's just a, a beach child just running up and down the beach the whole movie. And uh, uh, so they throw that in there. It's got no business in the movie just so that they can end with Andrew Dice Clay adopting this kid for no good reason. Uh, I Googled Sambuca Milkshake and the first thing that comes up is – uh, the Adventures of Ford Fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this was this is definitely one of those movies where if it if it came out when you were probably sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, you'd love it. Yeah. But anyone before or after it probably just hates it. It's just got to be right in that pre-adult wheelhouse. Yeah, I have a movie like that, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> That movie's for seven-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> I still watch it today. Nick, what the hell did you see this week? This week I watched Cartel Land and Trumbo. We saw Cartel Land last week. <laughs> yes, we did. And I just wanted to say a couple things about it. If you have 14 minutes of time, <laughs> I'll be sure to go into it. Cartel Land I thought was a good documentary. The best thing I thought about it was you get to actually watch the spiral of corruption repeat itself. Mm -hmm. And Trumbo I thought was a pretty good movie that had outstanding performances. Yes. Um, Competently directed. Nothing like crazy style no just, it was just, it was just, just a well good looking directed. period piece i just thought like a lot of the plot was not answered like they spoiler alert um no on trumbo i didn't see and it this isn't real big because they don't go into it at all uh, he starts right. he starts taking pills but they never go into it mm -hmm. you never get any real resolution with the antagonist woman the helen mirren character she's just, kinda, just awful she's awful and towards the end she just becomes a cartoon like she yeah. just becomes cartoonishly villain villainy yeah i looked her up she's legit she was like a scourge back then but uh, otherwise, I thought Brian Cranston did a, a wonderful job. Charlie, what else did you see this week? This week I watched, uh, I also watched The Crow. Oh. Yeah. What was that, 90, like, three? It was a I big early 90s week for me, pretty much. Alex Proyas, it was uh, pretty much his breakout flick. Um, before that, I think it was just doing music videos. But um, it is dark, moody, stylistic, um, and it totally holds up. I don't think many people would agree with me with that, but I think it completely still is relevant. And I'm really sad to hear that they're trying to remake it because I don't think there's any need to. Haven't they already be the crow? Haven't they already made that movie four times now? There's been four sequels or three sequels. Who's One was playing like Eric Pop. Draven? Uh, not been cast yet. Basic plot structure of just like, you know, a guy, girl gets killed comes back from the dead and the whole movie is about his revenge and redemption and his pet bird and his pet bird yeah uh what does he use what is his weapon of choice uh he doesn't have one Kung his Fu, angst right? his emo angst well, how does he kill people uh well one guy had knives so he used the knives against them <laughs> So he just takes whatever they have. Yeah. I hope you have a gun. He's a borrower. I'm planning on shooting you. He borrows it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what an awful plan. Well, he, why does every superhero have to have uh, the like a trade weapon? Well, no, that's fine. But if you're planning on fighting crime and your and your plan is to like whatever he's got, I'm taking it away and I'm using it against him. He literally just crawls out of the dirt. Crows. <laughs> crawls out of the dirt. <laughs> Uh, throw some face paint on and is in it. He's not thinking. He's just fueled by revenge. Isn't he dead, the actor? Yes. Brandon, Brandon Lee? Yeah. I, I always wondered at what point in filming did he die because it seems It was like during the... You mean like towards the beginning? Chronologically, the like yeah, how okay. much have they filmed already? Did they have uh, to... I think, he died in I that think... movie? Yeah. He died making that movie? He, done, yes. he died during the big gunfight sequence. Like, something went wrong and he got hit in the chest. Well, no. Uh, what went wrong was somehow a live round made it into the pile of blanks. That's not true. It had something to do with a, the blank shooting off wrong. Yeah. Really? Yeah, like yeah. The, the, the something went wrong with the blank, which yeah. makes it a live round, I guess. Yeah. I mean, well, it was, if it fires, it yeah. makes it not live. I don't think it was like someone like, hey, let me malicious. try to kill someone. No, it wasn't. But it wasn't I, I think it was, play, play, it was towards huh? the end because they didn't have to do a lot of. Yeah. But they, they definitely had stand-ins. Well, then the they, end, they but, lucked out big yeah. time because they it doesn't feel like they cobbled it together. It feels like they shot the whole film. Tony, 
Yes. What did you see this week? Uh, this week I watched an old classic uh, called Stay Tuned. Starring oh, John Ritter. Nice. Um, and the principal from Ferris Bueller. Is it John Jeffrey Levin Jones? It too? No, Eugene Levy. Uh, so, yeah, what would you think of it? I, well, I've seen it. Uh, probably this would have made my at least 25th to 30th watch of it. What? I grew up watching it all the time. So, and I felt nostalgic, so I watched it this week. Uh, basically, if you don't know what Stay Tuned is, um, Roy Nabel, played by John Ritter, is a couch potato. Is a couch potato, and uh, he watches TV all the time. His wife uh, and him get in a fight about how much TV he watches. His wife smashes his TV, and lo and behold, Jeffrey Jones, who plays a cable, uh, a cable salesman from hell, sells him a TV and satellite package that only shows programming from hell. Guess what the uh, guess what it's called? HTV, Hell TV. Oh, anyway, okay. All right. so every show that he watches on there is like a satire, hell-inspired show, a la Three Men and Rosemary's Baby, or um, Dwayne's Underworld instead of Wayne's World. Uh, so it's very really ve- bad puns, dude. It's very very nineties. Yeah. Um, so basically, what's what ends up happening is Roy and his wife get sucked in through the satellite and get sucked into the TV and then that starts the game which basically uh, they're in purgatory and they have to go throughout and survive for an amount of time inside hell TV bouncing from show to show and you know keep trying to survive and eventually um, Roy gets out but his wife was never invited in because she didn't buy the cable package. So he has to go back in and save her. It's very 90s, very good. It all ends with a salt and pepper inspired uh, music video where they have a dance-off slash fight scene. It's time for Tony's third degree. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, what's your third degree question this week? What's your favorite childhood movie? Wait, like like little kid movie or like when we were like preteens? No, like I'd say 13 and under. Whatever, yeah. Like, I don't okay. know, what's a movie? Maybe be it 90s, 80s. Okay. Yeah, don't give, don't give me a cartoon. Don't give me a Little Mermaid. Okay, well, that's the show for this week. want to thank you all for tuning in. Tony, what's all the places they can find us? Facebook, Stitcher, Apple, iTunes, Google Play. Google Play. SoundCloud. SoundCloud. The website. MySpace. No. ThisWeekInFilmPodcast.com. That's right. Charlie, Comic-Con's over. Comic-Con was cool. Um, I will be promoting my book uh, at the New York Comic-Con this year. We'll talk more about that next week. Gotta go. See ya. Blood Gulch. (laughs) Thanks, everybody. (laughs) Bye-bye.